If you clicked on this video, then you know what this is. This is a power tow model 40EZ um, airplane tug. And it has, the, uh, in this case, a Breeze & Stratton Quattro 4 horsepower engine on it. Um, that uh, I had a little tag on it when I got it that said that the oil had been changed in 2004. So um, we know it's older than that. And by the way it starts, um, it's uh, maybe quite a bit older than that. So I've rebuilt the carburetor two or three times. This is one of those that doesn't have a choke. It's got a little plunger. The plunger gets dry. I can replace that about every six months. And I just decided it's about time probably to uh, do something about this. So I researched what new tugs cost. If you've done that, then that might be why you're here too. And I decided to follow the path that I see some people take into putting a new engine on here. Now I researched a lot of different engines. Now I'm not a big fan of YouTube videos where people stand and talk. So I'm going to start taking this engine off and, uh, and then we can talk while we're doing that. The first step in removing this engine is going to be to take the belt off. Now luckily it's really easy to do that. You just uh, lift it up a little bit. Now these are the belt guides on here. You can just pop it off there. It's that simple. And you're ready for the next step. So now that we have the belt off, we can just start taking off some, uh, some of the bolts. There, uh, there should be three. A little uh, half inch uh, wrench for, uh, what's that mean? About 5 16 bolts, I guess. And there uh, should be three of them. Pretty straightforward. Now, you can get a lot of different engines to put on here. Um, you can go to Harbor Freight and get one. It's uh, you know, about $120. I looked at it and it wasn't my favorite good looking engine. So um, there's various places you can get surplus ones. I came across a Honda engine for 119. That looks pretty good. And um, there's many other choices as well. Now there's a third bolt in here. I've saved you the uh, time required to get in there. It's just a finagly little spot, you know. Not really that tricky, but uh, it, it's, it's a bit of a pain. Now what's really cool, oh, don't forget this. We've got a cable on here. If you slide this little guy off here, this is the throttle cable, and that guy just unplugs, just like that, pretty straightforward. So just like that, what was that, about a minute and a half, two minutes? Uh, this engine is loose. We got the belt, we got the throttle cable, we got the three bolts. Now there's three little spacers under there, and what's really nice about this is when you lift it up, if you do it just right, you can work your way out with a pulley. And you don't have to take the pulley off before you take the engine off. So there you go. We got the engine off. Now let's take a minute and look at what we have here. And these three little spacers here. Um, this third bolt, the one that's really hard to get the nut on, it happens to line up exactly with the cable that runs the, uh, the clutch. So, um, well, except for this time. Uh, anytime I've tried to play with it, the silly cable's been right in the way. And it's kind of hard to get out. So that one might just stay there. But I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit to help us have it look nice in the future. Um, I looked at a lot of different places to buy engines, as I mentioned. As it turned out, a friend had recently given me an engine. He said, I don't need it anymore. It had something to do with some plastic forming projects. It's a brand new engine. And he said, uh, you know, they said they didn't want it back. And uh, the only, only guy I know who might know somebody who might need it. So when I got to thinking about engines, I said, well, hey, I've got an engine. So let me grab that one here. This is the engine that uh, came into my life. It's a little Briggs & Stratton. It's a 500E, it's 3.3 horsepower according to calculation, but high torque, 5.5 foot-pounds, I believe. So we're going to give it a try and see how it works. Now, I've already got the pulley on it. There's a little D um, key on there. There's the, the, this particular shaft had both a straight cut keyway and a D key keyway. And so I just popped the D key keyway in there and tightened it up. Now what you'll want to do is put it on temporarily or maybe possibly wait until you have it on the, um, on the uh, toe here before you do that. Um, just makes it a slight bit easier. But um, then line it up with the pullets before you tighten it up for sure. And again, you know this pulley goes right down in there. If you play with it, now this one has a, because of the cable below it, it might just stay there long enough for me to line up the pull on it. Yep, just like that. This one here, the bolt comes up from the bottom. It looks like the right bolt. So to the bottom, we get our spacer in there. bit of an adjustment. I have a self-locking nut that goes on. Now these engines are probably, any engine that you get is probably going to be a um, um, pressure washer engine. 
Um, and the reason for that is that uh, pressure washers uh, have the heavy flywheel. And if you're smart, you'll get the heavy flywheel engine. Um, it should idle a little bit better. Also, you don't have to deal with a blade brake. So this particular engine does have a blade brake, and we'll spend a little bit of time looking at that. It's not too big of a deal, but you definitely be better off, if you can, with a uh, washer motor. Okay, we've got our belt in there, our uh, spacer in there. Getting that started, it doesn't go too bad. And we've got a uh, wrench and wrench here. It doesn't fit on this one, actually. Well, since I mentioned it, it wouldn't fit. It goes up tight. This one isn't tight enough yet for the ratchet to work, so let's we'll just do the old-fashioned one. Specified torque achieved. This one here. You might like the ratchet because it's uh, a little harder to get to. It's a less than a, what is it, a twelfth, a sixth, of a swing? Okay, all right. Just like that, it's mounted. So um, we can pop the belt on, which doesn't take too much. I have to have the belt right here. Just like that, just like that. Move that up. Oh. You got much to jump off of there. Of course, you can see how the, how the belt tightener works on that. And uh, now it's connected. It's a good time to tighten your chain. If you haven't done that in a while, you see there's a little tightener down here to do that. You need some lubricant to be good. So the next thing to do is to look at the brake. So here's a close look at the back of the engine. And what we see in here is this spring. This spring is holding the brake. The brake is a little piece of fibrous material that rubs up against the flywheel, which is down inside this housing here. So this is designed to be exercised by the handle that's on the lawnmower handles. You know about the one that you can't start the engine unless that uh, handle is pulled? So what this will do is two things. First of all, it closes this contact right here that turns off the engine. And secondly, it slams that fiber up against the flywheel so that it, uh, it will stop the, uh, the blade from turning. So what we want to do in this case is get ourselves a vice grip and just grab this thing and pull it off and disconnect it. So now if we look in here we can see this fiber. That's the fiber that runs up against the flywheel. And uh, we just want to take that out of there. Now there is a bolt here. We might be able to thread this thing out all together. Or we could just wire it off. Uh, and I think that's what I'm probably going to do is wire it off. Now the question of course is how are we going to turn off the engine when the time comes? And I think what I'll do is I'll mount a switch on here that has a wire that goes up to this terminal. I'll just short it off to the, uh, to the frame of the, of the engine that way. So let's take a little closer look at what we have uh, to work with here. Here's our little arm. I think it's called a bale, isn't it? The thing that uh, stops, uh, stops the blade when you let go of the handle. So here's where it attaches. This is the place where its cable um, is mounted. And that's the uh, little felt guy. Now what I want to do, I think, is I want to mount a switch at this location. So I've drug it out a little bit. I came up with this switch right here. Which I think might work pretty well. It's a nice fancy switch. And a simple switch, not a fancy switch. And when I put the lid down here I see this thing sticks out the side pretty nicely. That's a pretty good spot. And I think that might be a good place to put a switch. Just about like that. Sticking out like that. Wouldn't that be good? On off. So that's my plan. And then I'll run the wire from here and I need to have a ground somewhere. So what I've done is I've loosened this nut right here. Bolt maybe. And I've discovered that'll slide right under there very nicely. And I think that'll be a good ground. Tighten that up. And that'll give me a wire. I'll wire this off to here so it doesn't bounce around and short things out. And I think that'll probably work. So here's my tool. Step drill I think will probably allow me to uh, get that switch in there because I need to go you know, about uh, yay far, right? I'm two or three steps away. So let's just give it a go here. One of the things that's nice about step drills is that they make round holes in thin material. Alright, that's 
the next step. I think that's the one that does it. Yep, there we go. We got a nice switch mounting location. And with the lid on here, it'll look real nice. Now I'm a big fan of using stuff you've got. You know, this is sort of a MacGyvering process. Now it would be nice if that were a continuous piece of metal, but it'll work out. I'll take a file in here, clean up that bird just a little bit. Pull some wires out, extend a wire, put a ground in, wire up my switch, mount it up here, and we'll be good to go. Okay, it took me about 15 minutes. My little switch mounted in here. The bird cleaned up. A little piece of safety wire right here to, uh, to tie this um, brake mechanism in place so it's not buzzing around. And I ran the wires around the back side here. I've got a, a terminal that, that's, uh, that slides right on this uh, a clip that slides right on that terminal. And there's probably a fancy name for that. And then tucked away back inside here, you can hardly see it, but I've got the, uh, uh, I've got the ground connection in there. And I've got uh, that under the bolt there so it's good and tight. Everything's nice and tight. Should be good. And now when we put our cover back on, that looks pretty good, right? Looks like it belongs there. So let's see, we got a couple of screws to put in. Naturally, now I would start dropping all the screws. It's only reasonable, isn't it? Start them before we tighten them. I suppose these are bolts, probably. You know, they're machine screws, that's what they are. They have funny little shoulders on them. All right, so the inventing is over. I've removed the, uh, the throttle cable from the handle. And I think we have a pretty compact little package here. Off, on. Let's do a quick check and see how far it's snowing today, so I'm not going to go outside and do it, but let's give it a tr try here. So there we go. It's all put together. Got oil put in, got gas put in. I've already done the hardest part of the job, and that's putting away the tools, right? So it's just a matter of finding out if it runs. Now, ordinarily, if this thing starts on first pull, the smart thing to do is to go clamp it on the airplane, and it's nice and steady. You can start the engine up. In this case, for a while there, it was so hard to start that if I couldn't get it started, I wouldn't roll it out. So I've been starting it just standing alone on the road and on the ground here. But uh, we'll give it a try. Now, uh, this one has a little button on it. It says press three times. So you can give that a try. Two, three. Let's see how it goes. Switch is on. turns off. What more could you ask for, right? Successful project. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.